When you've hurt someone, you apologize and do your best to make up for it. Then you vow never to hurt them like that ever again. It seems easy, right? Of course, we know it's not. But what if you hurt someone day after day and that became the norm? This is when it becomes abusive. And healing from something like that takes a lot longer for both people. And the truth is, some people don't fully heal. That's why some relationships cannot survive the healing process. If there's been too much hurt, there may be no more room left in their heart. If you're a person who's getting hurt in a relationship, tune into my other podcast, Love and Abuse, over at loveandabuse.com. And if you've discovered that you are hurting someone that you care about, get with the program over at healedbeing.com. Life presents the toughest challenges. Every day you are faced with decisions that test your ability to express who you really want to be in this world. We're told to keep saying affirmations and keep thinking positively, but what do you do when that stuff doesn't work? Welcome to the Overwhelmed Brain, where you'll learn to make decisions that are right for you so that you can create the life you want now. Hello, this is Paul Coliani, and I want to help you learn the skills you need to deal with life's challenges using emotional intelligence and critical thinking without compromising who you are. This show consists of my personal opinions and is meant for informational purposes only. Always seek a professional for your mental health and well-being. What a great day for a show. Here I am sitting in my office. Sun is shining outside and I'm inside. <laughs> but it's a nice day to record, so why not? I'm so glad that you're here to enjoy what I'm about to say or destroy what I'm about to say, tear it apart because you don't like it or you don't agree with it. But either way, we're going to move forward and see where we go. Uh, I'm actually going to read this email really quick that I received quite recently. It has to do with uh, someone's reading selection, what somebody's reading or audiobook they're listening to. Somebody wrote to me and said, my fiance recently picked up a book or two. Let's see what it was here. Here we are. Uh, The book he's reading is The Art of Seduction and another one, The 48 Laws of Power and the Laws of Human Nature. And she said, I didn't think much of it until I heard part of it from the audio book he was listening to. And after some research, I became quite disturbed. I had thought The Art of Seduction was about being a better partner. The first rule is to choose the right victim. And it goes on to say to isolate your victim and make them rely on you, etc. I immediately felt sick to my stomach. Have you ever, have you have, do you have, huh? Do you have any insights on these books or are you familiar with them? Just can't understand why someone would willingly choose to read something like this. That is a great question. I have not read these books. I learned just recently about the art of seduction and what it was about. I actually asked AI. I asked, what is the art of seduction about? And it told me, and it said, uh, there are several ways to seduce and psychologically influence people. And some of it is unethical. Some of it is manipulative. And critics say that it was very, or is a very manipulative book. It's an old book, um, but it is teaching people how to seduce and deceive and uh, psychologically, like I said, manipulate and uh, get people to agree with you and get people to see your side and, of course, seduce them. I've not read it. I don't really feel the need to want to seduce anyone, but um, I understand why this would be a problem. Like if your romantic partner was reading something like this or listening to the audiobook, why it would be a problem because it's saying things that uh, are quite offensive. Choose your victim. Now make your victim or say this to your victim. You know, using the word victim automatically implies that you are a predator of some sort. You're predatory and you need a victim. So the question, I'm going to answer the question. I'm not going to talk about the book or put it down or I'm not going to say anything about the book because I don't know anything about it except what the AI told me, which I think uh, explained it fairly well. I'm I'm going to assume it explained it fairly well. It was was very non-biased except for the end where it said some people were offended 
and some people say it was about learning about the psychology of people. It's probably both. It's probably both where you're going to offend people. I mean, this person, I think his name is Robert Green. He wrote this book. He's going to offend people. And uh, he's also going to teach people. And so this is, this is like any psychology book that gives you the tools into people's, how they, how they think. And you can use those tools for good or bad. You can use those tools to manipulate someone, to influence them unethically. Or you can use them to um, understand yourself or understand why people do the things they do. I have read books myself throughout the years on psychology. And I've also read uh, things written by people that uh, their goal is to help you deceive others. I have read stuff like this. And my take on all of this is it really depends on who is reading it and how they're going to use it. Who is reading the material and how they're going to use it? Are they an ethical person? Are they an unethical person? Are they uh, a mean-spirited person? Are they an aggressive person? Or are they a kind-hearted person? Are they a respectful person? Because whatever information goes in, it comes out as the person they are, typically. It, I don't think a book can really change someone at a deep level unless they've been wanting to change or they've felt repressed or oppressed for a long time or forever and they want to change who they are and suddenly a book they relate to or some writing or some podcast or whatever they can relate to and say, yes, that is me. So if this person's fiance said, oh my God, this is me, this is who I am, this is what I want to do, then yeah, you might have something to worry about or not <laughs> because it's a book and it's just information. It's going in and yeah, there's, there's influence in the book. I'm sure the book was written to influence the person reading it to try this stuff out. But is it who this person is? Like I said, I've read things that were certainly, I mean, I read the, uh, something, I think um, a hypnotist wrote this and how to influence people in a very bad way, very unethical way. And I didn't like it, but it was fascinating to me. It was fascinating because it's sort of like thinking like a, a criminal when you're not a criminal. If you're not a criminal, you don't think like a criminal. You don't think like, how could I rob that bank? How could I uh, thwart the security system? You don't think like that when you're not doing that stuff and you're not uh, involved in any type of criminal activity. You just, you don't think like that. You just think like, uh, I got to go to the store and buy some food. <laughs> you just have these benign thoughts or respectful thoughts. But criminals, they think differently. Like um, the newest uh, activity that I've seen, I, I watch updates on new criminal activity. It's fascinating to me. It's uh, criminal psychology. Um, but one of the updates that I've seen or uh, how a criminal can fool you is they, uh, they clone someone's voice and then call you in that voice using some sort of script. Like they can write down what they want the voice to say. And the voice can sound just like someone you know. So it would be like somebody recording your child's voice and then calling you and saying, Mom, I, I got into a car accident. I need money. And uh, a, grand, a grandfather was fooled into giving their supposed granddaughter money. This is the story I read. I thought, that's really evil, and that's really clever. <laughs> but it's evil because somebody fooled the other person by tricking them into thinking that that was their child. Now I'm saying this, people are going to hear it and think, oh, maybe I can do that too. But I think it's a good public service announcement, even if people hear it and say, oh, I want to try that. I, I think it's a good public service announcement, mainly because the more people that know that this is happening, the more likely that you won't get fooled by it. Anybody that says, I need money and don't tell anyone else is, uh, you know, I'm going to say 99% a scam. It's rare that somebody says, I need money, don't tell anyone else. I mean, it happens, of course, but just to get a call out of the blue and I had this car accident or whatever and I need money and 
I hurt someone and I don't want anybody to know. Don't tell my dad. You just have to use your common sense and say, you know what, I'll call you right back and then call them at the number that you have and then find out if that's really them or not. Just typical how to avoid being scammed. But um, this is what happens is that you have criminal minds out there that will do things that they hear about or that they think about because they're always thinking in that direction. That is their direction. That is their direction of thought. And then when they hear something like an audio book that this person's talking about, they might think, oh, that's a great idea. I didn't have that idea before. I'm going to use that. That will definitely happen. And then there are people that say, wow, I don't think like that at all. I would never consider that person I'm trying to attract uh, as a victim. I, I like to know the psychology behind it. And it is great to have that knowledge with me just in case it happens to me or just in case I can pull some benefit from it and take that as you wish. <laughs> like influencing somebody by raising your eyebrows. You know, that's not one of the uh, principles of influence, but let's just say it was. Let's just say when you saw somebody and you raised your eyebrows, it attracted them. Like there was some sort of subliminal message in, message in there. If that were the case, and you read that in a book about seduction, but it was a completely innocent gesture, but it did give you a little advantage, would you do it? <laughs> you might. You might not. You might say, well, anything that influences somebody else, I'm not going to do. But someone biting their bottom lip, you see that in movies a lot, a woman bites her bottom lip, that's a little seductive, right? Maybe she's doing it consciously. Maybe she's doing it unconsciously. I mean... There are all kinds of things that we do unconsciously that we don't know we're doing that are signs of seducing or attracting or influencing or whatever. So we have all this out in the open, out in the wild already, and somebody writes about it. And now we become conscious of it. Do we still do it? And if we do do it, is it unethical? Because now that we know about it. I still think it comes back to, this is my personal opinion, I think it comes back to who you are. Sometimes we don't know what to think. Sometimes we are stuck in a thought process and we can't get past it. Like the person whose email I read, she's not sure exactly what to think about this and that's why she reached out to me, but... Sometimes it's not enough. Sometimes you just can't get out of your mind. You become obsessed, which is why I like to talk about our sponsor today, BetterHelp. BetterHelp is online therapy. They connect you with a licensed therapist who can take you on a journey of self-discovery from wherever you are. And that journey involves learning why you think the way you do, how you're thinking, and helping you to think in a way that is more productive and get you to the next step. Because sometimes... We are stuck on the step. And if we're stuck on that step and we can't go up any further, sometimes you need somebody to help you do it. That's where BetterHelp comes in. BetterHelp is entirely online. It's designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Sometimes you just feel stuck at that one step and you need that boost. You need the right words, the right maybe encouragement, the right way to think. Some people are really good at helping you Think in a productive direction so you can get to that next step. Discover your potential with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com forward slash brain. You'll get 10% off your first month when you go to BetterHelp. That's BetterHelp.com forward slash brain. There is someone there to help you get to that next step. Are you typically a kind and honest person? Are you respectful? Then if you did something like that, I don't have a problem with it. I don't have a problem with um, doing the gestures that maybe you are have already done or maybe you've had a hard time connecting with people and you do one of these gestures and suddenly you're connecting with people. I think if it improves your life and it doesn't have any negative side effect, it doesn't like uh, try to trick someone or deceive them. And you're not trying to gain an advantage for a selfish reason. You're just doing it because 
Uh, it's something that has improved your life. And maybe by doing that, your life improves and their life improves. There are ways to look at this that aren't nefarious. And uh, learning the psychology of it all, and I know a lot of this stuff. <laughs> I know a lot about the psychology of how to ethically and unethically influence people. I know about most of it, but I don't use things unethically. I mean, there are things that I've been taught that are unethical, or at least I consider unethical in my ethics system. And I will not, I will not do that. I will not use that because that's not who I am. I don't feel good doing it. And karma kicks my butt. <laughs> I don't like it. And so I don't do it. And I mean, it's not only because of karma, but it's just not right. It's just not the right thing to do. So I don't do any of that stuff, but I know about it and I know how it works. And I know when people are trying it on me and trying it to me, and I can usually see through a lot of it. And then I've become very good at understanding and interpreting people's language and behavior as far as um, determining if somebody is being toxic or manipulative or they're trying to pull me into a scam. I learned all of that from learning a lot about psychology and communication. And so my short answer to this person who wrote is to ask yourself, who is this person that you're with? And up till the point you found that out, has he shown any unethical tendencies? Has he shown any immoral tendencies? Has he been deceptive? Has he been showing that he can't be trusted? Ask yourself these questions because if everything was great, up until he read this book and suddenly you saw that they're talking about victims and, you know, if you have a problem with the, the material, but he doesn't use that material for bad and just uses it for learning and maybe on how to become uh, an influencer or a leader uh, in an ethical way, in a good way that benefits both people or all involved, then... Would it be a problem if he read material like that? And, um, you know, I'm not saying it, it is or not. You have to determine that. But I'm here to say that there are people out there that will expose themselves to this kind of material and walk away unscathed and unchanged, uh, but more knowledgeable. Meaning they don't become worse people. They don't become bad people. And if he's moral and ethical and what he read doesn't seem to change him for the worst, then maybe everything is okay. And this is like one book out of many that he's reading and he's just learning all he can and everything is going to be okay. And of course, if it really bothers you, you definitely want to have a discussion about it. You can say, look, your book is saying, find your victim. Now, I wouldn't uh, chastise him for that. I wouldn't say... You shouldn't read that, but I would ask, I would, I would ask, do you believe that's what you should do is treat people like victims? And then you can have a real conversation about it. Maybe he'll say, no, no, not at all, but this is fascinating. You know, he might say something like that. This is fascinating and it's so good to know this stuff. And uh, your conversation might be more uh, educational than you think. <laughs> it might, it might not go down a bad road where emotions get hurt or anything like that. So just keep an open mind, <laughs> keep an open mind and have that conversation if you want. Um, and also know that uh, there are other books in there that I believe, and I don't know about those other books that you mentioned, but I believe they teach leadership skills. And so all of these combined could teach, you know, healthy leadership skills. And some of them, you know, some of the words in some of those books may not be healthy and are certainly signs of toxicity and toxic thinking. And I would hope that uh, today's day and age, we wouldn't see stuff like that. But it's a 20-year-old book, 20 years ago. I'm not saying it was good back then either, but I'm hoping that over the years we've progressed. But I, I know there are still books out there like this. So we just have to understand the person reading them and then make our decision based on that. Now, here's the other thing. Let's just say he was reading, uh, what is it, Mein Kampf or Mein Kampf uh, by Hitler. That might be a different story. I mean, it would be a different story if he was reading something like that and he said, you know, this guy had a lot of good ideas. 
<laughs> then that might be something that you'd have to have a serious conversation about because that, uh, I mean, somebody might say, yeah, but it's the same thing, right? Well, you have values, I have values, and if those values are violated and you see somebody reading something that uh, to you or to me would be clearly offensive and clearly questionable, then we would have to say something about it and have a serious conversation about it. But books like this, even though they, uh, I mean, books like the, the the power book that you talked about, the seduction book, books like that, even though there are probably some questionable things in there or a lot of questionable things and how the author approaches people and treats people, there may be another way of looking at it that isn't as harmful as it could be. I mean, it certainly doesn't help when it comes to teaching people how to treat others with respect and kindness. It does not help on that front at all. But uh, the knowledge is there, and some people do learn from the knowledge and don't take the toxic elements away from uh, from their learning. So that is just something to consider, and maybe this will help you have a conversation where maybe you can stay calm until it's time to not stay calm. <laughs> but hopefully it doesn't get there. That's a great question. It's something I don't normally address on this show, and uh, I think it's a good thing to think about and consider. Let me just tell you this quick story. It's a very quick story. I told this on the show before, but I was in Washington State once, and I was at this bank, and this woman was there, and I was working behind the counter on computers a long time ago when I was in technology and stuff, working on the computers, and she shared a story with me. She said, I have these dreams at night where I am hiding in a closet, and I come out and murder someone. I come out, when the person comes into the bedroom or whatever, I come out and murder them. That's my dream. And uh, I said, really? (laughs) That's fascinating. What in the world? Why do you think you dream that? And I didn't, I didn't judge her. I didn't say, I can't believe you dream that you need help. You better get therapy as soon as possible. I didn't say any of that. It was just, you know, I started off with curiosity and fascination. Really? Oh my God. Why do you think you dream that? And, uh, she said, well, I go to college and I'm in a criminal psychology class and I want to get in their mind. I want to get inside their minds and think how they think because I want to know why they do what they do. And I said, that is fascinating and I think that's a great idea. And she looked at me and said, what, really? (laughs) And I said, yeah, what better way to get to know a criminal than to think that way and to try it on and even have these dreams about it that is uh, going to give you a leg up when it comes to learning about their psychology. She said, you're the first person who's ever said anything like that, anything supportive, because everyone else thought I was crazy. Everyone else put me down for it in some way. Everyone else thought I needed therapy. And you're the first person who's supported me in this. And I said something along the lines of, well, you don't really actually plan on doing it, right? (laughs) She said, no, I have no inkling in the world to do anything like that. I just want to understand them. And I said, that's fantastic. What a great way to get better at what you're doing. And um, she felt really validated. She felt like she was on the right track. And I mean, it sounds like I'm encouraging her to think like this, but in a way I am Because I'm making the assumption that she's not that type of person. She's not the type of person that's going to break into somebody's house and wait for them to come home and hurt or kill them. That's not who she is. And I believe that. And so when we had that conversation, because I believe she wasn't that type of person, I definitely had an open mind about what she was telling me. And so that really, really hit home. Uh, For me, I mean, just to have that conversation, have that sprung upon me, that kind of information, somebody dreaming about killing somebody else. And uh, it reminded me that I I do keep an open mind most of the time and that if somebody springs something like that on me, 
that I won't just jump into automatic judgment mode. So we have to be careful with that. We don't know the whole context of the situation. And sometimes it's a simple explanation. Unless you think they're crazy. (laughs) Unless you think they have it in them to do such a thing. That's a different story. But if you know the person and you know who they are deep down, then maybe there's really nothing to worry about. And it's a good conversation to bring up and talk about and figure out what they think of what they're learning about, or in this case, what this person was dreaming about. Just good to have these conversations and try to keep the judgments out until it's time to judge. (laughs) Because sometimes somebody will say, well, yeah, I've been thinking about it. That's a problem. You know, if, if they're thinking about doing something harmful, obviously, we have to go in a different direction. But in this case, with the person who wrote Just if they're a good person and you don't believe that they're going going to do anything like this, then a pleasant conversation can be had and you can learn a lot more about him. But if he says, no, I consider them victims, that's a different story, a different direction that you might want to take with your life or not. You know, I'm not going to make that decision for you, but it's just good for you to know what their values are, how they feel ethically about about these things how they feel morally, because maybe there's a values violation in there. You know, one of your values is not being met and uh, that might be a problem. So this is what I have for you. I hope this helps. Thanks for writing and thanks for asking that very unique question. And maybe this will uh, open up your mind a little bit or uh, make you think there's something else you need to look at with your fiance. (laughs) I hope it's the former, not the latter. We'll be right back with my thank yous and my goodbyes and my final words right after this. Thank you for listening to another episode of The Overwhelmed Brain. I want to thank our patrons of the week, Crystal, Jamie, Larry, Larry, you're new. Great to have you on board. Thank you for your support. Very kind of you to sign up for the program and show your support like that. Thank you so much, Larry. And the rest of the patrons, Chris, Michelle, Angel, I appreciate all of you. Thank you for your financial support. These are the patrons who found value in the show, and they are the ones that inspire me to continue. They are always on my mind. I appreciate all of you. If you find value in the show like these patrons do and you would like to give back, Head over to moretob.com and uh, there are options over there. Thank you so much, patrons. I am grateful. And I want to let you know I do have another podcast, another podcast called Love and Abuse over at loveandabuse.com. That is where I talk about how to handle or deal with the difficult relationship, especially in the area where you have somebody that is controlling you or manipulating you or just making you feel bad all the time. Head over to loveandabuse.com if you want to learn more about that. And uh, if you're the person that makes people feel bad and you want to change that about yourself, head over to healedbeing.com and I have a very comprehensive, very thorough program on how to help you change that and give you the best chance at salvaging the relationship if it's in trouble. So healedbeing.com is the place for that. And finally, thanks to Kevin McLeod of Incompetech.com for some of the music transitions in the overwhelmed brain. And uh, as my final words, this um, this show today reminded me of something that happened when I was married. My wife was looking into a, uh, I'm just going to call it a cult. <laughs> they don't call it a cult. Well, some people don't. Uh, a lot of people do. And she was looking into it and she found the teachings very helpful. And this can happen. I mean, there's a lot of organizations out there that have very helpful teachings because a lot of them are based on good teaching. They're good lessons and good learnings. And uh, some of it's communication and psychology and how to heal from trauma and things like that. And just bits and pieces of what um, other organizations and modalities, healing modalities and psychology and all these resources that contain good information. But some organizations, some people will uh, use them as an advantage to gain people's trust and uh, gain people's uh, following, 
they'll lure people in with these great tools that actually work, but then they get sucked into a cult-like atmosphere and they lose friends and now they're stuck just being a part of something that uh, is hard to get out of and very oppressive and very isolating. And there are abusive qualities about certain organizations, but I'm not going to name it. I'm not going to put anything down, put anyone down. Uh, Some people are very happy with what they're doing and I don't want to name names. So she just told me that she was doing all this um, study and reading and she loved it. And I said, that's great. That's great. I had no problem with it, even though I knew that the organization or the group was more cult than anything. And so I never gave her a hard time about it. I just you know, let her be. That, that was her thing. And she was happy with it. But then one day she said, I'm going to go to a meeting or something like that. And boy, that really hit me. I thought, whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay. It's one thing to read. It's one thing to learn. It's one thing to gain all this knowledge and maybe even wisdom. It's another thing to go into something that that really made me fearful because I knew that once she went to the meeting, they would use their techniques. They would use their manipulative ways to lure her into more and more into the cult atmosphere. And that scared me. I did not want that to happen. And I, you know, back then I wasn't always good at communicating. So I said, uh, no, you, you can't do that. They're a cult. And that was basically the first time I said the word cult to her. I didn't say anything like that when she was reading about it and learning and enjoying. But when she said that, I felt like I had to step up. I felt like I had to say something. You, you can't do that. I know people that were in that and they said they had a hard time getting out and uh, they were constantly harassed and it was just on and on and it was not healthy. It was not a good situation for them. So when my wife said she wanted to go talk to them, I was so afraid and I really felt like I deflated her sales and I feel really bad for doing that. Like I said, I wasn't the best at communicating back then. I wasn't as, um, let's just say, I didn't have a good way to express myself that would compel her to stay. And that's hard for me to say because I really believe in allowing somebody to find things out for themselves and let them be and make their own decisions. But back then I wasn't always like that. Today I am. But if my girlfriend came to me and said, hey, I'm going to go check out this fill in the blank cult. (laughs) She wouldn't use that word, but let's just say I use that word. I would probably say, uh, okay, but just know here is my knowledge of that. Here is my knowledge of this. And this is usually what happens. So I'm just telling you this so that you can make an informed decision. That would be my approach today. I would still be scared. (laughs) But at the same time, I wouldn't be because I know her well enough. I know she's smart. I know she would figure it out. And to be fair, my wife was smart too. And she probably would have figured it out as well. Quite honestly, she probably would have been there and said, whoa, they were trying to stuck me into some weird thing. And I don't want to do that. She probably would have done that. But back then I was actually controlling in many ways. And so that's what happened is that I said, no, you can't do that. That's a cult. And I'm, I'm against this and don't do that because I was afraid that she would go and then get sucked into it, which to me right now, I, I, I think I could have handled that a lot. I know I could have handled that a lot better. Just like Uh, what I would say today to my girlfriend if she did that to me today. Because I think it's more important for people to find out for themselves that uh, something is good or bad for them. But I just felt this, uh, just felt this thing inside me. If she goes and she's already into the the studies and the the works, if she goes, she might get sucked into it. But then that's not giving her enough credit. Again, this is me thinking today. Back then, I wasn't giving her credit. I wanted to control what she did and where she went. Um, I mean, at least in this sense and other things too, but in this particular thing, I didn't want her to do it. And I 
pretty much stood up. I didn't say no or else. I just said, no, you, you can't do this. It's a cult. And uh, she didn't go. But I really felt bad for doing it afterward because, like I said, I, I just saw her sales deflate. She was excited about something, and I took that away from her. And right now, I, I regret that. I, I wish that I had said, okay, you know, go check it out. This is my truth. This is what I know. This is the people that I know. This is what they told me. So just keep an eye out for that. Keep your ears and eyes open. And uh, I'm just letting you know, you know, go do your thing. It would scare me, but I kind of have to trust her. Did I know her enough to know that she wouldn't get sucked in? Obviously not. I didn't know her well enough, or at least I didn't trust her well enough to know that she wouldn't get sucked in. So I guess the point of this story is that if the person they are is truly the person they are, and they're not seeking something outside to define them, or they're trying to change a path or change their ways or seek something more meaningful in their life, and they're prone to fall for something that uh, sounds enticing, but it's really not healthy for them. If they're not already like that, then I think it's okay most of the time to trust their process and let them learn on their own. So at least you're not the person that says, see, I told you so. You see why I said that? Because then you look like a pretentious jerk and I don't want to be that person. And I'm not really necessarily giving you this as advice. I'm just recalling who I was back then and how I acted in that situation. And back then I was a little bit more fearful and I felt like I was protecting her. But really what I was doing was saying, I don't trust you enough to make your own informed decisions. And eh, I don't like that feeling. I don't like that feeling. Now, it doesn't mean that I wouldn't tell my girlfriend today not to do something if I knew for a fact it was dangerous, but I would definitely have a conversation about it. I wouldn't just say, don't do that. I would have a conversation with her and say, this is what I know to be true. And so I'm just letting you know this because that is a way to let someone be who they are, make their own decisions, empower them with their individuality, empower them with their autonomy. So when they do what they're going to do and learn what they're going to learn, they can weigh those decisions. They can evaluate those decisions. And then they can come back and say, hey, look, I learned all about this and this is my decision. And then you know where they are inside them. And like I said, most of the time, if they are the person you've known them to be for a long time, they're probably not going to go down a road that uh, is harmful or that uh, separates them from the world and you and life in general. You know, that cult road, that, that's what cults do. They separate and isolate the person. And so we make these choices in life. And I'm not talking about children. I mean, if a child does this, they don't have enough life experience sometimes, and it, it's not always going to work out. Sometimes you have to intervene. I'm talking about adults that are making decisions in their life and choosing to trust them and choosing to trust that they're going to make the right decisions. Because sometimes it's helpful to know what decisions they're going to make. <laughs> sometimes it's helpful to know that uh, they've made a decision to whatever, leave us, isolate uh, themselves from the world, expose themselves to harmful information, whatever it is, and then we have to decide if we're going to continue to associate and connect with them because maybe that's where they feel more, more comfortable is believing in things like that or doing things like that. And if that's the case, now we have possibly a, a values conflict where our values don't match. It's hard. I, you know, this isn't an easy topic because some people will say, well, no, you have to stop someone from doing something that you know is harmful. And then at the same time, I'll say, yeah, but we have to trust them enough to make the right decision for them. And so it's a gray area sometimes and we just don't necessarily know what to do all the time. So that's why it's good to continue to have open conversations because as soon as you say something like, no, you can't do it, guess what? The rebellion can kick in and they say, well, I don't care what you say. I'm going to do it anyway. Or because you told me I can't do it, it's like what a kid says, right? Because you told me I can't do it, I'm going to go do it. Sometimes that happens. Or because you told somebody not to do something, what they'll end up doing is feeling like there's something missing in their life. 
And so they'll want to learn more or find out more or they'll be compelled to go in that direction because now they never found out if that was the thing that was going to fulfill their life. Hopefully we aren't trying to control other people like I used to do. <laughs> Hopefully you're on a better path than I was on and you don't have to worry about this stuff. But uh, just thought I'd share just in case it was part of your life or part of your family or your friends or your romantic partner, whatever it is for you or not. All I ask is that you just keep an open mind because that's how you step into your power so that you can create the life you want. Always take steps to grow and evolve. You are powerful beyond measure. And above all, and this is something I absolutely know to be true about you, you are amazing. Amazing.